Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. We are here for 7.4, Classifying Numbers. And our essential question is, how are numbers classified? Today, you're going to need your Jaguar Jots on section 7.4, a pen or a pencil, a highlighter might be useful. Leave those calculators behind because we are not going to be using them. But bring your bright ideas, your best effort, and your problem-solving skills. Let's start with some definitions about rational numbers and irrational numbers. A rational number is a number that can be written as a ratio of two numbers. And remember, a ratio is just a fraction. An irrational number is a number that cannot be written as a ratio of two numbers or a fraction. And together, rational numbers and irrational numbers make our set of real numbers. So before we even start talking about rational and irrational numbers, let's actually talk about something that is a little bit easier to understand. And that is making a list of the location of where you're sitting from precise to not very precise. This is going to help us understand rational and irrational numbers just a little bit better. So this list that we're going to make, we're actually going to make it assuming that you're sitting in a classroom at Jepson or your school. So let's presume that you are sitting right here and this is your seat in your classroom. So it is your desk. And then your desk is then in your classroom. And then your classroom is your school, which is Jepson. And so right now we can make an assumption that if you're sitting in your desk, you are sitting at Jepson. But I can't make the assumption that if you're at Jepson, you're sitting in my specific classroom. I can't make that assumption because there's lots of classrooms at the school. But let's take it a little bit further. If you're sitting at Jepson, I can say that you are sitting at Vacaville. But if you were tell if all you told me you were in, in Vacaville, I cannot assume that you are sitting at Jepson. For example, as I'm making this video, I am definitely not at Jepson. I am at my home, but I am still in Vacaville. So there's these areas that are out here. These are different homes right out here. They're not Jepson, but they are in Vacaville. So Vacaville is in a larger state, which is California. And again, these are towns out here that are not Vacaville, but they are California. And California is in a larger country, which is the United States. And then the United States is in a larger area of the Northern Hemisphere. And the Northern Hemisphere sits in a larger thing called the Earth. And then we can even say further, the Earth is in something larger called the Milky Way. So there are some assumptions that we can and cannot make based on this information. So let's go ahead and take this and go ahead and pause the video. And I'd like you now to make that list from very precise to not so precise based on this information here. Okay, now that you've done that, let's check your list. It should say desk, classroom, Jepson, Vacaville, California, United States, North America, Northern Hemisphere, Earth, and if you got real gutsy, Milky Way. So now that we have this list in place, let's answer some questions. If true or false, if a person is at Jepson, then they must be in Vacaville. Is that true or false? Well, that is true. Since Jepson is a place in Vacaville, they have to be in Vacaville. So this is almost like writing an address, right? I think to Harry Potter, right? Harry Potter lived under the stairs, right? That was his address. If a person is Vacaville, then they must be in Jepson. Well, that is false. They could be someplace else. They could be at the movie theater. Where else could they be? Come up with some places that they could be and then jot that in right next to it. So you understand why it's false. Could they be at Vaca High? Yeah. They could be at other schools. Could they be grocery shopping? Mm hmm. They could be lots of other places. If a person is in your classroom, then they must be in the USA. Well, then that's very true because USA is the bigger place. If a person is in Jepson, they must be in your seat. 
Well, that's false because that'd be very uncomfortable. Can you imagine 30 people sitting in one seat? Wouldn't that be kind of awkward? If a person is in North America, then they must be in California. So you, what that is saying is every single person that says I'm from North America, we're also, they also are saying I'm from California. Well, that is very false. People say I'm from Maine. People say I'm from Canada. People say I'm from Mexico. I'm from Puerto Rico. They say I'm from all different kinds of places. If a person is in the Milky Way, then they must be on Earth. Well, that's false. So far, we think Earth is the only place where there's people, but there might be someplace else. We don't know. But the Milky Way contains the Earth, right? But there's also other planets within the Milky Way. There's Mars, Pluto, maybe, maybe not, depending on the year. So how does this relate to real numbers? Well, here's the same idea. We have natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers, and they all live within real numbers. And if a number is an integer, then it's also a rational number and a real number, but it is not a whole number or a natural number because integer does not lie inside whole number or natural numbers. But if I'm a natural number, I am also an integer. So you have to remember it goes, right? I can be, if I am this, then I'm all the things out. But if I am integer, I'm all the things out, but I'm nothing in. So let's talk about what these different things are. A natural number, are, there are counting numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, things like that. It's the way kindergartners are using. They say, I am this many, I'm this many. It's those. A whole number is when I add the number zero to it. An integer is when I add negatives to it. So negative one, negative two, negative 358. But we know an integer is also one, two, three. So that's why it includes these. So an integer is all of these plus these. But I don't rewrite all of these because they've already been included. A rational number includes all of these plus these. One half, negative two thirds, 2.25, 0 0.333. Why is it 0 0.333? Because 0 0.333 is one third. And then we have irrational numbers. They're the weird ones. Pi, square root of two, the cube root of seven, negative root three, two pi, they're the weird ones. They're the ones that I can't write as a fraction. They're the ones that just don't play by the rules. I can't, the decimal doesn't repeat. The decimal doesn't terminate. See how I have a repeating decimal? It means it has a pattern or this one terminated. They just don't play by the rules. And then all of these are real numbers. So now let's look at example number one, classify each number. The square root of 18. So when I go back to what this is, I can't take the square root of 18. So since I cannot do anything to it, it is an irrational number. Why? It's not a perfect square. Since it's not a perfect square, I can't do anything to it. It's irrational. So now look at 35 hundredths. Ah, I said it right there. The decimal terminated. Since the decimal terminated, it is a rational number. It is 35 hundredths, which is seven over 20th. And that's it. It's not an integer. It doesn't go any smaller than that. So let's go back and look at our slide that actually has those on it. It doesn't go any smaller. It's not an integer. And if it can't be an integer, it can't be a whole number or a natural number. So it is a rational number and that's as small as it goes. Or let me rephrase that. That's as specific as it goes. And so I just stop my classification there. Pi, pi is just one of those irrational numbers 
we just know it. The decimal form does not repeat or terminate. Even though we say 3.14 all the time, that is just an accepted answer, but it's much longer. It doesn't ever stop. It's infinite. So it is a memorized number that we know as irrational. And then if I have the opposite of the square root of 36, well, I know that the square root of 36 is six. So the opposite of six is negative six. So this is a rational integer because it's equal to negative six. So what I would like you to do is I'd write, like you to write down two examples of a rational number and two examples of an irrational number and then explain it to somebody. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember, be kind to each other because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.